and welcome back to tomorrow. My name is Benjamin Higginbotham. Now, before we get started, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to all of the patrons of tomorrow. These are people who have contributed $10 or more to this specific episode to get access to absolutely everything. We've also got our Patreon producers. These are people who've contributed $5 or more to this specific episode. If you'd like to find out how you can help crowdfund the shows of tomorrow, head on over to patreon.com slash tmro. All right, let's go ahead and get started. We've got Justin Park from Intergalactic Education here to talk about an upcoming Kickstarter called Space World. Justin, thank you so much for joining us this Saturday. Yeah, thanks for having me, Ben. So tell me, uh, first off, who is Intergalactic Education? So we're a, a game company. We've been building a game called Space World for uh, a while now. I originally started the company when I was in living in Switzerland. Um, I had a couple of interns from the International Space University uh, that's where I went uh, for school as well. And now we're located in downtown Washington, D.C. area. I've got a couple of interns from uh, American University and the University of Baltimore. Uh, the students are in school for game design. And so, yeah, we're building uh, a game about the space industry. So I've been uh, watching your show now for, for many years. Um, and, yeah, you guys were actually one of the inspirations I had for, for getting into this industry to begin with. And so... I wanted to build a computer game about the space industry because it seems like um, things are always about two years uh, in you know from now, and so the game itself uh, goes into the future at 24 times the speed. And so this is important because if you play the game for a year, you're 24 years into the future, so you can have lots of cool things. Uh, the game also this helps. Uh, put a perspective on how long it takes to do a deep space mission. So if you want to send something to the moon, for example, uh, normally it takes about three days. So in the game, it takes about three hours. So you send your rocket, you come back in three hours, and it's there. But if you want to do a Mars in advance, it takes about a week uh, for your payload to get there um, in the game. And so, uh, yeah, it's, Space World is one of these games that actually plays even when you're not playing it. Uh, the information is stored in a database uh, offline and, or online, and so, yeah, the game just is always playing. And so if you want to do a deep space mission, you better be prepared uh, with the, the resources and uh, make sure that your astronauts aren't getting too much radiation or they're going to be in trouble. So if the game is true to life, does that mean it will always be two years out and you'll never actually be able to buy it? Um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, one of the things you do in the game is you, re you collect research and development points, and so you do those by answering uh, math questions. And then there's also a series of mini games that you can uh, do. And so you use your research and development points to help uh, NASA do analyses. You help uh, SpaceX uh, unlock the Falcon uh, Heavy. Uh, you, you can help Blue Origin unlock the New Glenn and the New Shepard. Uh, you can help Virgin Galactic uh, unlock uh, their, their uh, space plane. And so... Uh, yeah, we're, we're focusing on uh, real companies. And so um, there's also the opportunity to do contracts for the DOD. And so that's another one of the things that you have to balance out. So the DOD contracts are worth a lot of money, but then they take your reputation points down. And so that's actually, you don't want to go below zero reputation points or the world goes to war because you did too many military contracts and and you have to start over. And so you counterbalance that by doing space exploration contracts and, and building things on the lunar surface. So describe for me a little bit of the point of the game, right? So we, we've, it's based on for real Z space and uh, actual space yep. agencies and, and all of that stuff, but, but there, there's, there's gotta be a story or an end game. What, what am I trying to accomplish while playing the game? Yeah, so you start the game out in uh, January, 2017. There's a new president coming into uh, the office and he tasks you with putting the first female on the moon by the end of the decade. Uh, it's something that hasn't been done before. I think that's something that, uh, yeah, we need to do. You know, I think it's something that NASA could do. Uh, if we did it in the 1960s in, in a decade, you know, we should be able to do it now in about half the time. Um, uh, one of the things that you want to be able to do is have enough reputation points so that if you do manage to get enough people there, you can uh, start a new government and become the president uh, of the new uh, country that you start on the moon. That's kind of one of the more distant goals. Uh, other more immediate goals is you pick out which 
uh, Google Lunar X Prize team you want to back. And so winning the Google Lunar X Prize is one of the first goals of the game, um, even before getting you know a female to the to the moon by the end of the decade. Uh, the game also allows you to do other things. If you want to try and do a Mars Direct, uh, you can certainly do that. Um, it's not easy, um, but uh, yeah, there there are a lot of different uh, paths into the future uh, that the player can take. So we're we're watching some of the gameplay right now, and, and early on we saw some math equations being solved. Uh, is yep. that part of what the gameplay is? There's an educational component here as well. Yeah, definitely. So uh, in order to get your research and development points, you have to answer algebra questions. Uh, we picked out algebra questions because uh, we're also marketing the game um, to schools. Um, we're testing the, the software out at uh, middle school in Southern Maryland right now. So we've got about 100 students who are playing the game and, and getting a feel. And uh, yeah, we're also getting feedback from the teacher because um, the questions that the students are, are answering are actually real questions from their textbook. And so the teacher can grade the software a lot faster um, because we have a, a separate application that allows them to do that. Uh, we kind of, I, I, I wanted to build the game, but at the same time I wanted um, to build a company. And so a lot of investors aren't so interested in building a computer game, but if you tell them we're an ed tech company and we're trying to improve you know, the math uh, education system in America, then they're a lot more inclined to listen to what you're trying to do. And so, yeah, we've just been trying to get as much traction as we can from teachers because I feel like this is a game that students um, should uh, see. You know, if they see all of the cool things that are going on in space, you know, it might inspire them to go into the, one of the STEM fields. And, and who knows, you know, they're going to be the engineers that are going to be taking us to Mars someday. How's that traction been going? How, how, what's the response been like thus far? Uh, pretty good. Uh, a lot of schools don't like to pay for the software. Um, but, you know, for now, we're just trying to get traction. Um, one of the other things that I've been doing recently is applying for grant money from the Department of Education and the National Science Foundation. They also have uh, opportunities for small companies uh, like ours um, to develop this type of software. Uh, Neuropilot has an interesting question, which is what happens if you goof the metric unit conversion? I assume the game uses uh, metric as opposed to in uh, imperial units. Metric. Yeah. We don't use feet because uh, it just. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. I mean, I remember you guys doing a poll on your show as to whether or not to use feet, and yeah, we're not going to use pounds or any of that. It just uh, is kind of silly. So uh, you you do you, that's one of the things you have to do in the game is you have to figure out how to speak metric as opposed. So if you're in the United States and you're you're used to the imperial units, um, that's not going to help you in the game. I mean, obviously with the basic yep. algebra you're fine, but if you're trying to do like actual. Um, uh, speed conversion, uh, you'll be both basically meters per second, so forth and so on? Yep, cl kilometers per second, usually if you're in space. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's just something, um, we might have it as like a tool tip, if you hover over it, then you can see the conversion to miles uh, per hour, but it's really something that, yeah, I don't, don't uh, yeah, I think it's time for the United States to, to, to understand what it is to be in kilometers per second, you know. Good luck, good luck with that. We tried that once before, it did not go over so well. <laughs> All right, uh, Ministo is just asking, uh, uh, do you plan to bring this to Australia? Our, our Australian correspondent, of course, asking. Uh, yeah, so in the beginning of the game, uh, there's a region select. Uh, right now we're focusing on uh, North America, but we'll have stretch goals in our Kickstarter campaign that will be for the other regions, and so, Australia is part of the uh, Eastern Pacific region, and uh, so they get lumped in with uh, India, who you know has a very uh, strong aerospace program in Japan. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we definitely don't want to exclude any particular country um, from space world. But you know, this space is is now something that is accessible to every country. Uh, Dariachi asks, uh, you talk about working with schools, is it going to be available outside of schools? So if one of the citizen, citizens of tomorrow uh, yeah. wants to play, so, can, they, can uh, they grab it? Yeah, we're going to have a commercial version. Uh, the school version will be focused a lot more on the uh, algebra questions 
Uh, there's things in the storyline that we want to do that are a little more controversial uh, that we won't be able to have in the, in the student edition. Uh, for example, uh, you get contracted by the Catholic Church to build a church on the moon. Um, and so that's not something I think we can have it in the school. You know, there's parents that are gonna, not going to like that. <laughs> so, yeah, that'll be, you know, specifically in the commercial version. Um, yeah, other things, you know, uh, birthing the first child in space. That's um, something that's kind of controversial as well, you know, and I think it's something that will be important. You know, if you think about it, eventually there's going to be a baby that's born in space and that baby's you know people are going to know the name of that child for the end of time you know it's uh just if you look at the reaction of what happened to uh you know when john glenn passed um everybody knew about it and so i think when the first child is born in space that is going to be a major milestone um and in space world it's something that you can you can try uh, as soon as you have the research and development points you know you might want to be careful because uh, you do lose reputation points if people die in space. That's one of the ways we, we balance the game out. You're talking about the points, uh, and I think this question from Space Kyle kind of talks to that, which is, do you have to answer math questions in real time to successfully launch? Uh, yes. There, um, math questions are built into the launch and landi landing uh, processes, uh, mini-games, I guess you could call them, in the, in the game. Uh, the one uh, that doesn't require you to answer math problems is the Falcon 9 first stage landing game because it's already kind of hard. You have to maneuver your first stage back and land on the barge. And um, yeah, we've been testing that out and uh, the students only have about a 50% landing rate. So which I guess is kind of accurate if you uh, look at the, the record that SpaceX has had so far. Uh, but yeah. Um, and that'll be something that if you use enough research and development points, you'll be able to automate it so that it, it's successful um, more often and you won't even have to, to do the mini game. But in the beginning, uh, yeah, we want to make the game as fun as possible. And so there's all of these uh, different games that um, add to the entertainment value of, of Space World. Speaking of the difficulty level, Cameron's asking, can you choose a grade level or is it all just kind of one level of, of math and... Uh yeah, well, we decided to focus on algebra first because we're only a five-person team. Uh, we'd like to add uh, more educational, a range of educational content, you know, going up to calculus and maybe down to simple math, uh, like addition and subtraction. But for now, uh, you come in and it's uh, algebra level, which most kids start algebra in uh, their freshman year of high school. We're testing... Uh, with the eighth grade because they're the honor students and, and we thought we might get better feedback from them. So uh, Joe, Bu Joe Bu uh, asks, uh, with the game featuring real companies, how involved have you been with those companies in the development of the game? Uh, yeah, so I've been talking to some people at Blue Origin. Um, just last week, I uh, shook hands with Jeff Bezos and I told him I'm building a computer game about you. Uh, he was in D.C. for the Arthur C. Clarke Awards, and so, yeah, he said that sounds exciting. He likes games, and he uh, introduced me to some people at Blue Origin uh, that actually I knew from um, some previous space conferences that I had been to. But, uh, yeah, I'm, um, I go pretty far back with uh, Will Pomerantz. Uh, I've known Will for about 10 years, and so, um, yeah, I'm hoping Virgin will be one of our premier uh, partners, uh, and then... Uh, yeah, I know a few people at SpaceX, too, I guess. Like <laughs> <you>. <laughs> uh, so speaking of some of those, will you be including speculative or future planned missions like ESA's, the European Space Agency's Moon uh, Village, uh, Mars One's plans uh, to go to Mars, uh, or SpaceX's, uh, what is it, the Interplanetary Transport System? It's... So yeah, we're already, uh, we have the Moon Village built into the storyline uh, already. Uh, the Mars One... Uh, well, they just had to delay this week, but uh, yeah, the Mars One people, um, we'll definitely have a little bit about them. You know, they haven't released any specs on the hardware that they're intending on using. Uh, we have been modeling a lot of the rockets that exist now already. You know, we have the new Glenn already modeled uh, in stages as well, because there's an animation where when you're launching into space, you can see the individual stages uh, drop off when you put payloads into space. 
You know, we've got a lot of different space modules too. We've modeled a lot of the Bigelow Aerospace modules. Uh, we've got the ISS. Uh, we've even got a Skylab. If you want to go back and uh, put a Skylab module on a, one of the new heavy lift rockets that uh, you can unlock with enough research and development points. Does it fail when you first deploy it and then you have to go and rescue it as well? Um, may, um, there'll certainly be a probability that you can, um, that it might fail and that you might have to fix it if you don't put enough research and development points into it in the beginning. So. Uh, that'd be odd. Bring, bring giant space blankets. Try to keep it cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, space Cookie has more of a comment than a question, maybe a feature request, as it were, which is, uh, would like something like this, but also with the ability to run your own rocket and vehicle designs. Fully custom CAD, not just like modules with Kerbal Space Program. So basically, they want to build their own rockets from scratch, not just from modules. Uh, that'd be yeah. kind of cool, and a really neat, neat learning technique. We want to be able to do that. I think 3D modeling is a tool that kids uh, are going to be very good at and that by by the time they become you know seniors in, in college you know they'll have 10 years of 3d modeling experience i think that's a skill that we really want to yeah start teaching kids at a young age um yeah I, I have wanted to put a function like that into the game for you know since the inception but it's hard you know we're a five person team and so to build a 3D modeling um, application, you know, like an AutoCAD, uh, it's, it's uh, quite a challenge. You know, we might have it so you can upload 3D models from AutoCAD or from uh, some 3D modeling tool. And then, you know, we take it from our website. And then if we, you know, put it through the approval process or we'll have maybe some kind of online voting, we could stick those modules into the game because we're developing... Uh, with a tool called Unity 3D. And Unity 3D uh, allows you to build computer games. You can import models from all kinds of different um, environments. Uh, we use Blender a lot because it's an open source 3D modeling tool. Uh, but yeah, Unity can take uh, 3D models from lots of different environments. And so, yeah, if uh, that's one other option that doesn't allow, it doesn't require us to do so much um, development uh, in terms of the in-game uh, 3D modeling. Uh, Johnny Boy asks, what platforms are supported by the games? So right now we're focusing on uh, PC. We will, we'll have the game on Steam. But because we're building the game with Unity 3D, uh, that allows us to very easily export the game to iOS and Android. Uh, we actually just had our first alpha version uh, we started, uh, that's running now on, on uh, iPad. Uh, we got that working yesterday, even. Um, it was Tuesday, yeah, third, we started on it on Tuesday, and yeah, now it's finally working. Uh, there's a few glitches where the videos won't run properly, but uh, everything else pretty much works. It, it connects to the database, and, and uh, the game runs. So that's the important part. All right, I'm going to combine two questions for this last one, which is from Anonomin. Anonomin? Uh, basically like anonymous uh, and space Mike, which is basically uh, when is it going to be out and how much? Uh, yeah, so we're going to be doing the Kickstarter uh, in January. Uh, we're probably going to be asking uh, 20 bucks 15. We haven't decided if it's going to be 15 or 20 and then um, We're going to have kind of a low bar, but then we'll have lots of uh, stretch goals because we, we want to build this game uh, but we also want to make it uh, really awesome if we're able to to raise the money to do that. And so, um, yeah, I would say we already have a working version, obviously, that we're, we're testing in the schools right now, but we want to have like a commercial version. The commercial version is uh, really going to, you know, it's going to take some work. We want to, you know, make sure that it's polished. And so I would say uh, probably the middle of 2017 uh, to the end of 2017, if we do... Uh, raise a lot of, of money from this because, you know, there's a lot of mini games that I have ideas that I want to include into Space World and they'll take development time. But at the same time, uh, yeah, the, the game itself should be ready, you know, in, in the middle of 2017, uh, relatively bug free. Or, yeah, bug free, not relatively. We want it to be uh, bug free. For people who are interested, where can they get more information on the upcoming Kickstarter and what you guys are working on? Uh, yeah, if you go to spaceworld.us, 
that's our homepage. It'll redirect you to intergalacticeducation.com. We found that a lot of people were typing in intergalactic wrong because it's kind of a tricky word to spell. And then if you click on our news, uh, it'll take, a, take you to our uh, Facebook page, and that's where we post uh, pretty regular updates uh, about every other day with new content, videos. Um, yeah, we'll be uh, redirecting people to the Kickstarter as well. Uh, we're intending on having videos every day featuring the, the different companies that are going to be in the game. Uh, and that way people uh, become aware of all the cool stuff that these space companies are doing. All right, very cool. Now, before we, uh, before we go into break, I have six quick questions. Uh, just first thing that comes to your mind, no wrong answers, uh, kind of uh, just a way to uh, get the different uh, opinions from different guests. All right, are you, are you ready? Uh, yep. Yeah. All right, first one, moon or Mars first? Um, moon, for sure. Liquid or solid propellants? Uh, I like liquid. What should be the name of the first vehicle going to Mars? Shoot, I already wrote this down. because I knew No cheating! I, <laughs> I knew you were going to ask me these questions, and I actually prepared, <laughs> but then I forgot the sheet that I prepared, so now uh -huh. I just have to be here. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, let's see here be like, uh, I don't know, something not too philosophical, but uh, I don't know, like the Ark or something. Why the Ark? Where, where, why would... Uh... It's, uh, it's kind of philosophical, I guess. It has to do with uh, uh, biblical times, you know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I uh, should have probably found that sheet that I prepared, but uh, yeah. No, no, I like this better. I like this better. No preparing, just like like right off the top of your head. Kind of, it gives you a really good insight into. Uh, uh, I'm gonna have yeah, to start. That was uh, that's the one that I thought about before because yeah, I don't know. Uh, in space world, you can name it whatever you want. You know, mm. we we allow you to name your rockets and your robots when you uh, build or procure them, and so yeah, you can <clears throat> you can name your rockets whatever you want. Uh, when do you think humans will first land on Mars? Um, Mars, you know, there, there's cycles, and so you, there's certain times that you can uh, get there a lot easier than others, but probably in the early 2030s. Um, Mars is really hard. Um, All right, so, so then yeah. when do you think humans will first land on the moon? Well, not for, no, we know when they first landed on the moon. Let me, let me actually ask the question, correct question as it's written, <laughs> which is when do you think humans will set foot on the moon again? <laughs> yeah, um, I'd like to say before the end of the decade, you know, that's the kind of the point of the game, you know, and hopefully, you know, someone in uh, Donald Trump's uh, transition team sees the game and says, oh, maybe that's a good idea. I would say realistically, probably in the early 2020s, uh, maybe 2022. Um, we'll see, you know, there's going to hopefully be a new goal for the administration um, and so, yeah, I hope that the moon is high on their agenda. And why space? Um, I think space holds um, the next market. You know, um, there's people out there uh, that believe, uh, people like myself who believe that there's a trillion dollar industry out there. You know, there's, we've built essentially nothing, you know, and if you think about all of the value that could come from, you know, oxygen manufacturing and the entertainment if you were to build, you know, a space superdome. You know, that's one of the things you can do in Space World is once you've built this superdome, it unlocks a game called Spaceball. And Spaceball is, you know, something I think a lot of people think is cool because you can take another person and you can throw them three meters into the air. That's kind of uh, entertaining. And so, yeah, it's just important uh, I think it's going to be a stepping stone for us politically as well. You know, um, the governments of the world now, they're, 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 they're pretty good, but they definitely have their shortcomings. And I think creating a new government in space is, is something that will be a big stepping stone for humanity. Um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it inspires us. It's, uh, it's just very important. I think people... Sometimes uh, they, they get too concerned with what's going on in their day-to-day -day lives and they forget, you know, that there's, we're, the Earth is just a very small place. And, um, yeah, it, we're going to reach a point in 
in our future where we'll look back and we'll it'll be hard to imagine a, you know being stuck on earth for as long as, as we've been here